We are looking at article number 24 and the second half of the article and is considering the nature of good works. We'll pick up our reading at this point with these words. Therefore we do good works, but not for merit. For what could we merit? We are indebted to God rather than he to us for the good works we do since it is he who is at work in us, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Philippians 2, verse 13. Let us keep in mind what is written. So you also, when you have done all that is commanded you, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. Luke 17, verse 10. Meanwhile, we do not deny that God rewards good works, but it is by His grace that He crowns His gifts. Furthermore, although we do good works, we do not base our salvation on them. We cannot do a single work that is not defiled by our flesh and does not deserve punishment. Even if we could show one good work the remembrance of one sin is enough to make God reject it. We would then always be in doubt, tossed to and fro without any certainty, and our poor consciences would be constantly tormented if they did not rely on the merit of the death and passion of our Savior. You can detect the argument that is going on within this confession with the Roman Catholic Church, which argued that uh, we need to have merit in order to win our salvation. We need to perform good works that find favor with God so that we might enter into heaven. The Roman Catholic position was that uh, if you take away the motivation of the merit and of good, for good works, then uh, people will not want to perform good works. Instead, they will live as they please. And so the attack on the reformers was that they were encouraging uh, lawlessness, licentiousness, because there's no longer any motivation for doing or performing good works. We saw some weeks ago that the motivation for our good works is not an effort to win the favor of God by earning uh, life, Rather, it is the response of love and gratitude for that which God has already done for us. Our service for God, our good works, are not those of a slave trying to please a master and earn a reward, but the response of children to a loving Heavenly Father. You see, the attitude is quite different. One is a kind of works, righteousness mentality that finds a reward based on merits, the other is a grace mentality based on what God has already done for us in Christ. And so the motivation for us has changed. And we now live a life of good works. So now we continue to note that our, we do good works, but not for merit. Merit is an important term here. It implies that we can rise to the level of God's expectation and earn his favor and indeed be rewarded for the good work that we do. And the argument of the reformers will be that we cannot rise to that level that of God's expectation. By any of our good works, we cannot rise to that level of perfection which God requires. And so therefore, we cannot do anything that would merit a reward. Then secondly, even if we were to try to merit something by a good work here and there, it would in no way eclipse the fact that we have already engaged in a multitude of sins. And so, even if we merited favor with God for one particular good work or a handful of good works, the previous sins which we have committed are of sufficient weight and gravity that they would drag us into hell despite the good works that we were expected to do. And so we do not base our salvation on human merit. Uh, so God were 
Lord indebted to us for what we have done. Instead, the confession says we are indebted to God. Uh, we owe everything. We owe everything to God for all that we have and enjoy. And so the, the reformed position is that God himself works within us and enables us to do any good work. Anything that we do is energized by the Spirit of God. Anything we do is because of the new life that God has provided us with. And so God, as the confession quotes Paul, gives us both the will and the, the, the working for his good pleasure. This is all of God. So what good works you do are uh, empowered by the grace of God. And then similarly, this grace of God, which enables us to do good works, similarly meets those good works with a reward. Now, it's not the reward of merit, earning eternal life, but it's as those who are already uh, recipients of eternal life, now we are blessed uh, with God's grace, who rewards his good gifts with additional blessings. So it's one blessing upon another. So when we pass from this life, we will be evaluated for the way that we have lived before God, and we will receive certain rewards in view of our uh, faithfulness to God's word. But in all of that, it's not that we have merited eternal life. Only Jesus, by his word, has merited that for us. And so the confession reminds us that when we do good works, even should we arise to approximate the level of God's expectation, we still must say we are unworthy servants. We've only done what was our duty. It's not as though we've gone above and beyond the expectations that God has for us and done something extra, like a school student saying after class and doing an extra assignment to win a higher award. No, we are unworthy servants. And so we must cry out to God for his grace and mercy and depend entirely upon that. Uh, the, the confession concludes with this comment that we cannot do a single work that is not defiled by our flesh and does not deserve punishment. Do you consider that when you engage in uh, some good works for neighbors, friends, family members, or just in your service to God, do you recognize that even your best efforts are corrupted and polluted by your sinful nature? Even my works here in preaching the gospel and in uh, opening God's word are those which are tainted and polluted by my own sin. And I do not depend upon that whatsoever, but entirely upon the grace of God for his mercy and love. So even our good works, whatever character they might have, are tainted and corrupted by our sin. And so we should never depend upon them to earn eternal life. The confession is concerned for your heart and for your peace of mind. If you have a works righteousness mentality which says, I've got to earn God's favor to win eternal life, then you will always be doubting, always be questioning, always fearful and anxious about your life because you never know if you've done enough. You never know if your works have been good enough. And your only expectation at best will be that you will spend a considerable period of time in purgatory. And hopefully somebody on earth will remember you and perhaps provide an indulgence to speed your way through that process. Hopefully. But how long will you be in purgatory? And on what measure will any of those sufferings rise to the level of God's expectation? The grace of the gospel is that which gives peace to our consciences, even as Jesus met his disciples with that word of peace. We need not be tormented and feeling guilty and overcome by grief and despair, but we should go forward in faith with great hope because we have a gracious Savior. That grace is revealed most of all.